Now, staying with that story, at the center of the latest Jubilee flare-up are people now described as shadowy figures from past regimes. The unnamed persons have been accused by top Jubilee officials of attempting to derail the government's programs. The controversy ranges from the identity of those individuals to the amount of money due to be spent on the railway project. But just why is this public project surrounded with so much mystery? Well, KTN's Dennis on Sarigo went looking for some answers. Billion standard gauge railway project became a subject of heated debate when the top leadership of the Jubilee government accused a little known, ever smiling and soft spoken Nandi Hills member of parliament Alfred Keter of being a gun for hire. <laughs> <laughs> the country's chief executives failed to name individuals they accused of trying to derail the election promise to Kenyans. More than a month later, there's still talk of shadowy powerful figures in government. The country for a long time has been hijacked by a few corrupt individuals who run cartels. Wale hawa uyo uyo mtu hawa hawa wawili hapo hapo hawa watu yako wenye wanajaribu kujificha kwa marinda ya serikali hapo tu wanalala hapo kwa marinda ndio waletangi kichwa lazima muwatimue kabla ya wiki moja Uhuru's government must give a statement regarding the architects of angolism who are now using the same trick and then came these wakasema jumatatu kesho watayama wiki hii Wataenda kotini na hiyo pesa watawapatia judges. We are telling the Kenyan judges, this is a reform judiciary. You cannot, you cannot be used. The judiciary cannot be used. Nasitake watu waandika, hata njini watu wa magazeti, msitafute kuandika hati oo, wanafanya kaa civil service, nini, ni wakora hapa, wanafanya mabiyashara hapa kwa itawa. Sitaki kusema raisa hende atangazia watu atifulani ndiye broker. That is demeaning the institution of the presidency. Sisemi deputy president ya fanya hivyo. Lakini muko na spokesman wa mambo ya serikali. Coincidentally, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has in the past investigated powerful individuals linked to the Goldenberg and the Anglo leasing scandals. The individuals are known to the government. It is not clear why the government is still unable to name and shame people who appear to be stopping the Jubilee government from implementing its election agenda. Indeed, the government is yet to officially confirm or deny a letter table before a parliamentary committee by Nandi Hills Member of Parliament Alfred Keter that shows China Road and Bridges Corporation was blacklisted by the World Bank of another project in the Philippines. Then there is the contradicting cost of the railway project. Henry Rotich, the National Treasury Secretary, told the Parliamentary Committee the project will cost 447 billion shillings. A day later, Michael Kamau, the transport CS, told the team 327 billion shillings as the amount the project will cost. A difference of a billion shillings. What is the real cost of the railway project? The Attorney General Githumigai has raised questions about the railway tender process. We are the office that will finally sign off. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we haven't signed off on anything that we, are, we don't know. The Deputy President, William Ruto, has also in the past written to the AG, asking him to probe the legality of the tender. But a week later, the DP was joining the President for the launch of the project in Mombasa. Who are the powerful men and women that the president and his deputy can only mention but cannot dare call by name? Denson Sarigo, KTN Prime.